And so we're going to get right into it. Father God, we invite you to the place that you belong, that is in our hearts and that's in our minds. Since we belong to you, almighty God, we just want to be what you want us to be in. We want to be in the moment where we are. Help us to not live in our past and our memories that are not productive, but to live in today in the reality of who and what we are as we move forward. God, we just want to thank you for every blessing you've given us, and some of them we just have taken for granted. Father, you've blessed us with so many blessings. We, we can't name them. We just can't do them. So we just want to praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. This story on Daniel, um, it just is an amazing story, and uh, it continues to yield and yield and yield. And even tonight when I was looking at it, I was just saying I, I sent out everybody who got a um, – um, a text message, a couple of areas that I wanted to study tonight. But even then, when I read the text again, something jumped out at me and I just said, Lord, help me to stay focused. But I got to say this because I'll just be ruined if I don't. I, I'll end up getting to the end of all of this and come right back to it. So I've got to share this with you. But if you have your Bible, you go to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, and I sent you what we're going to focus on, but this one jumped out at me, and it was so uh, powerful that it's like, man, and I saw two words here, three, three words that it just jumped out at me. One is and, is a conjunction, it's, it's connecting the two. These two words that I saw in Daniel 2, and I just almost felt like crying, but where were they? And... Um, I think I have them now, or at least I'm in the arena to have them. But in Daniel chapter 2, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, and he's really messed up. He can't sleep. He believes in dreams because he's wanting all of the interpreters to tell him what the dream means. And he's really, really, really agitated. And he apparently feels danger to his life because uh, he says that he can't find somebody to interpret that dream. He was going to kill all of them. All of the astrologers, all the interpreters, they got to go. And so that's telling you what state of mind he's in. Um, when you're a king and when you're an authority over millions of lives, that, you know, they had several kingdoms that he was over. You know, he just, <laughs> he was losing his mind because somebody's always after you. So people will be after you when they're not after you. Um, so in this situation, though, he said, everybody knows that if you don't interpret this dream, everybody's got to die. And when the people came, the dream interpreters, and they were sharing with him, and, and he said, look, y'all y'all, y'all just messing around. You, you, you're just trying to buy time, and I ain't having it. So he was smart, too. They're highly intelligent. And in this setting, he says um, uh, to go out and kill all of the, those who interpret the dreams, all of the astrologers. And and um, so they were about to die. In verse 14 of chapter 2, when Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? And Ariok then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went in to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Now, what I got that jumped out at me before then was in the end of verse 14. Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. And this is really, really critical. How many of you have wisdom and tact? And when you speak to people of authority, people who have your you know, you're, they're, 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 they have the hand around your neck financially on your job or wherever else. Are you more prone to just speak your mind, shut down? What do you do? And I don't want to belabor this point because I, I, I'm, I'm notorious about being a person who just speaks their mind. I'm known around the world and the universe for that. But I would rather, have, if I could live my life over, which I can't, praise God, I don't want to go through that again but to live with wisdom and tact. So I, I, can, I can't go back, but I can go on forward 
that's really what I want. And that's where I am now. This is, I'm stationed here in my desire to be in every circumstance that I'm going to be in and be able to speak with wisdom and tact. So I got excited about that. And of course, I could spend the rest of the lesson talking about what that means, but I won't. I'll just leave that little nugget with you and ask you, when your life's on the line, when things are tough, no matter what your circumstances and the situation, do you prone, are you prone to speak with wisdom and tact? Are you prone to shut down, which is a language in and of itself? Are you prone to speak words that are misleading just so you can get out of the situation? What does all of that actually mean? Who are you at this particular point in your life? Wisdom and tact will be something you would do a follow-up study with on your own. Uh, verse 17, then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friend Hananiah, Meshael, and Az Azariah. He urged uh, them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, and he goes on into this long prayer. Again, I want to stick with the power of, of fellowship. What does it mean then in a time of trouble uh, to recognize that everybody's in trouble, that it was not just um, the astrologers, the, the world of uh, astrologers, it was everybody who's in a prophecy, all of the wise men, they were all going to be killed. So it would be, uh, as, how, what, what type of mindset, what type of attitude do you think we can develop and or develop it, if we have any at all, about the people who are in as much trouble as you when you're in trouble, whether they be in the church or not, but here he went to the church. Is your tendency then to hide from the church, or is your tendency to, in fact, do what he did? What 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 is your normal tendency? Now, we got we don't have much time, so I could actually lecture right through this. But for those who had just a quick minute to give it a thought, I really want to hear from you. So, what is your tendency when you get into trouble, even when you know everybody's in trouble during the pandemic? Who have you thought about the most? Who have you encouraged the most? Who, who's been involved in your whole world of thinking and in acting on the basis of uh, everything that's happening with you? Let's just let's have some talk. Well, it, those of you who are talking, you're, you're, you're muted. I would like to say that in the beginning of the pandemic, I think most of my focus was on the on the youth. Just remembering how they had to stop going to school, and some of them didn't graduate. Um, we couldn't celebrate them; they couldn't be celebrated at school. And I've always tried to give the high school and college graduates something. And but this year I made a point to you know I'm used to bringing like I gave you your grandsons but people who went at church I went and found them <laughs> we met somewhere so I could give it to them I didn't know um, Sister Joe's and them had moved to Clay they used to be night there so I went out there and found them one Sunday afternoon but um, I just just wanted them to know that somebody was you know, was proud of what they had accomplished. And um, and not only that, in the church, but I even spread it out even further this year, the people I knew um, connect, you know, Joe had somebody in his family graduated and a couple other people graduated later. So I got to get them something, get them. <clears throat> so anyway, I, I just, I think it was more about the youth and things that they were going through. And for me, I just believe that we have to trust God in whatever circumstances we're in. And I wouldn't, you know, of course we had to, we didn't have church for a while. Have you know, we didn't meet together for a while. Um, 
But when we did open it a couple of weeks later, I started coming back because to me, there's nothing like face to face. There's nothing like worshiping. Um, I mean, I thank God for the Zoom and the Facebook, but it's just nothing like being there. And so I, I'm, I'm just, I don't worry about whether I'm going to get COVID or not. I just try to take whatever precautions I can and it's God to protect me and, you know, those around me as well. So that's my skill. All right. Excellent. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, you can go ahead. <clears throat> Janetta? Yes. Um, I was... Your first question was, "What's my tendency?" My tendency yeah. is to is to kind of go to myself, and I'm gonna just be over here and be all right. But um, I knew that once we were unable to meet together, that my children would lose if I didn't. As soon as we could go back face to face, I had to have them there because otherwise, I felt they would be they they just need the consistency, and so because they need it, then I do too. And um, that made me push ahead. That made me come. And um, so, yes, I would like, I, I probably would pull away, but I have texted people, called, checked on more so than I probably would have actually since COVID started. So I made more connections than I probably made in the last year than I have made previously. Wonderful. Uh while, while I got you on, I tell the whole audience, uh, I was talking to Shanetta maybe a year ago, and we were talking about how long she had been here. <laughs> and I cannot explain to you that she was here at the time. I don't remember her being here. And <laughs> that's, that's just not me. I remember everybody who's been here. and who's, I almost remember everybody who visited. I cannot remember the time that Shanetta was here. Just cannot remember. That's I just threw that in there. I know you ain't interested in hearing that, but I'm gonna, I just had to throw it in there. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on another comment on our tendency to, to, to pull apart at a time when we need to, to be together. Mike? Hey, Patricia? Hey, okay, uh, yeah, you hear me. Um, I was just gonna say, you know, my, my tendency, I'm just a people person. And even when we the, the pandemic first hit, you know, it was a few Sundays where there was no service. But as soon as I realized and I heard that the, the services were starting back again, you're starting back up, I just couldn't see myself sitting at home looking on the tube every Sunday because it just wasn't fulfilling my spiritual needs like, I, you know, like I'm accustomed to. So I got right back on out there in the game. I say, so folks call me crazy or whatever, but I had to have that one-on-one -on -one face to face. So I had masked up and I tried to make every service um, that I could do and still continue to do so because it's just something about that that um, personal fellowship for me that um, that you know it, you can't get it on YouTube and Facebook and since the pandemic you know since it's here seems like my spiritual life have boomed because I've had access to so many different you know uh, Facebook YouTube um, um, ministers and, and 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 you know with a lot of the um, ladies um, prayer calls and you can just get spiritually uplifted any time of the day so and I've always also started a chronological bible study with about four women and it's just this this pandemic has just blossomed my as far as my fellowship and my relationship with God it's just really enhanced it um tremendously and I'm just I'm just thankful and I just keep on keeping on I, I know it's gonna get better but I never looked at the fact that I was not going to Assemble as soon as the doors was open. I already made up my mind. I'm going. I'm gonna mess up and I'm gonna be there. Wonderful. That's a, that's always that powerful testimony, and it's it's consistent with your maturation, your maturing, and your growing. And uh, you've always hung in there. You've been around a long, long time. And at the time when when the church needed you the most, uh, you you stood on your faith and you continued to. So it. Uh, I thought about you yesterday. I went to Ghana. Uh, on the way to Alpaca to get some some tea at uh, uh, this Peruvian place, and when we passed Amazon and thought about the old Jesse Jones uh, manufacturing plant that was over there and used to work back there work over mm -hmm. there days ago. I thought about you, so yeah, yeah. 
Anybody else want to share? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, it really didn't stop me because I have been uh, consistent with reaching out to everyone, but I had to learn how to be safe about it because there were times uh, this lady that, I spent, that I've been helping for years, I, I helped her while I was working, but now I'm helping her now that I'm retired. I found creative ways to go help her. When they were saying not to go into the house, I would have her to set her information out on her porch and I would go up to her porch, get what I need and take it to my car. And I would speak to her over my phone. And I, I think I shared a statement Sunday that I try to be creative in what I do. And I have, um, I have lately, I've been trying to reach out to those that are sick uh, the best way I can, those that are, that are close by me. I just drop by, don't go in the house. I just drop by, uh, let them know I'm thinking about them. And, and the text messages, um, I've texted about everybody at South Central that I have a number for. Now, if I haven't texted you, it's because I don't have your number. And I'm praying for everybody every day because I know that prayer is going to get us all through. No matter what we're going through, that prayer is going to take us. And I know this. And uh, my mindset has just been uh, just on everyone because when I don't see, when I don't see this one or that one, then I'm going to pray and then I'm going to find out what I can do to be available to them. Wonderful. That's the consistency that you've always shown and probably the rest of the church is tired of hearing me say it, but I just remember the first day, even on the very first Sunday that Thelma came, we had one person who was taking, um, who was in, in charge of the, the cards when visitors came, and Thelma, on the very first day, volunteered to take that on because uh, this young lady was leaving. She lives in Durham, and she's going back to uh, to, to worship out of Cold Mill Road, LaFonda, named LaFonda Day. I don't know if she's gotten married and things since then, but that was way back in the day. And I'll always remember that because I never heard it. And just never crossed my mind that somebody would come on the first day and uh, ask to take on a responsibility for the church like that. That was amazing. So she's consistent. The family you see is the family's always been. Anybody else before I go to this next passage? The fellowship in a time of trouble and a time of need. It is really, really, really difficult for Americans because to, Americans are so-called rugged individuals. Now, that's simply not true in everything that I just said. Black Americans, this is a new phenomenon. Being to yourself, handling your own business and keeping people out of your business to the extent that when the community is in trouble, you stay that way. That is not the, uh, the, the, the communities most of us grew up in. When we grew up in a smaller, we weren't mobile, we didn't have money. We didn't have the finances that we have today, and we did not have the debt. We couldn't get in debt. They wouldn't give us no credit cards, bank wouldn't loan us anything. So we never had to worry about having any debt. And so now we just, you know, we have our debt, we have our our stuff, and and people, God made things to be used and people to be loved. We reverse that. We love things and use people. And as a result of that, we stay isolated at the most time of trouble, we're in isolation. So there's something to actually think about that even in a lesson like this, in times of the pandemic, in times of, of trials and tribulations and challenges, all right, don't mess with me, get off, get off, move. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> see how, see there? And, um, so, uh, no, you can come on back on that. That's the inside joke. Everybody just don't know it. So uh, we really want to have this opportunity to really reflect on what it really means to, uh, you know, renew community, at least for the church, and if not the whole church, maybe everybody else zip code, <laughs> but do something that allows you to not become more American. And remember what I just said. God made things to be used people to be loved. We reversed it. We use people and love things. So if we get our hearts and minds centered on, um, on the mission, when we get in trouble, we ought to call on each other. 
and when we go to pray with each other. You don't have to worry about the Friday night prayer or any other time. This is just what you do. And what gets me about all of this is that God blessed all of them. <laughs> he heard everybody. You know, they were all his. And, and he already knew what was going to happen. And, and, and when, when Daniel prayed, he said, now he, he, you would think that God gave him interpretation of the dream. That's not what David said. In verse 23, he said, you have made known to us the dream of the king. Uh, I mean, that, that's really, really an us thing, a we thing. And when Barbara was on, I always remember many, there again, years ago, when she was talking about this an us thing, and that always stuck with me, because when she said, that's the first time I'd ever heard it that way. So in, in the time that we have left, Daniel, his life is challenged. Uh, the, the three Hebrew boys lied to being challenged. And in chapter 3, since we already know the story, he says in verse 17, if we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward a change. He had already just talked to them, you know, like, like, like a son, like a, a father. He had so much love and respect for him. But his ego stepped up. He's a king. You don't mess with the king. And, and he wasn't having that. He just wasn't. And now... If you ever been so hot with your kids, you want to throw them into a fire? I'm going to ask you about your spouse because um, I know what you would say about that. So, thank God there ain't no fire furnaces for spouses. And 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 and, and has, has your spouse ever been so mad if you let throw you in there? So, Nebuchadnezzar was furious. Man, it, 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 the fire was so hot that, that the people who were going to throw them in, they they, they burned up. The Bible says uh, the, the three Hebrew boys actually fell in because the people who were going to push them in burned up themselves. They just poof, fell on in there. And, and what is it then, what are the values you have that's worth dying for? And if you don't have a value that's worth living for, you don't have one that's worth dying for. What are the values, what are the things that drive you that you don't compromise on? What are your values? What are the things that you stand on no matter what? Unmovable. Mike? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um, this, this pad, I was just going to say, you know, that there are certain mars and godly values that that I live by, and I've not always lived by them because, um, you know, I I heard them and I read them, but I didn't really believe them enough to to um, put them into practice. So there are certain um, godly um, principles and godly um, values that I'll not compromise no matter what. You know, I'm gonna stand on them, and I'll just have to suffer the consequences with them. So there are some things as spiritual things and godly values that I, I don't I don't allow anybody to cause me to compromise. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anybody else? What do you do you have any you want to share with us? What what do you value? What are your values that are so strong that you don't compromise? I I mean you could I know when I was an administrative assistant, um I, I tell people, I'm not going to lie for anybody else, but only lie for myself. <laughs> so they say, I'm not in office. No, I'm not going to say you're not in office. You know, I be, I'm too busy to talk. Okay, I say you're tired up, you're too busy, but I'm not going to lie. It takes Nicholas to tell the story, but he was talking the other day, and uh, we were talking about taxes, and um, his sister-in-law was there, 
and she was asked, she asked me one time, she said, do you uh, do tax? I said, yeah, I do all taxes. And she said, well, will you do mine and put this so-and-so on there? I said, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going. <laughs> I won't do it. They, would, they just had a big laugh about me the other day about how I stood on that. And um, I took Sierra and one of her friends to Kentucky Fried Chicken some, some years ago. And we got water. We got some of those new chicken barbecue wings when they first came out. I got home, they had they had got a drink on the way out the door and brought it home. I tore both of them up. <laughs> I tore them mm. up. They were stealing. They were still, I said, that's stealing. We didn't, we didn't pay for a drink just because they have a self-service. You don't get what you didn't pay for. At least got you one. That way you got to come out here with one drink. Three people. <laughs> <laughs> I try my thing is I try to honor God whether somebody's looking or not. I know he's always. I never forget that sermon years ago as a child. Can't hide from God. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been with people who uh, one of my pet peeves is uh, I, don't go out with me and go to a restaurant and they got lemonade on the menu and then you get some water and, and and ask them to bring extra lemon, and you put that sugar in the lemon and make your own lemonade. And they've got their pocket. I mean, I, I've seen it. I, <laughs> one of my church of Christ preachers, he did. I was looking at him and said, what are you doing, man? What what are you doing? And he he, he kind of bowled up at me and said, they got lemonade on there. You, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. And we, we meet every quarter. He didn't do it no more. He didn't like it when I said it, but Probably nobody had called him on it, but you, you can't do little things like that. There, of course, there's some things that are much more major in our lives, but um, you'll make it a habit if you're not careful. So um, Daniel and, and, and Meshach and Rishak and Abednego came to this with their values intact. This is what's important here. They were prepared for the moment. It's difficult when a crisis hits you to introduce and stand on principles that you've never stood on. So now they're getting ready to face Nebuchadnezzar. God going to strike him so he's going to be crazy. They're getting ready to deal with Daniel. You're going to have to deal with the lions then. They've got some crazy stuff in this story about to come. I mean, this, this ain't the worst yet. I mean, it's bad enough. But if you're not preparing for what's coming by standing on your values and principles now, when that time comes, when, when I shared with you the illustration on Sundays that people are saying, I'm going through a hard time now, but, you know, when it together, I'll be back. No, they will not. When, when when you're not standing for Christ now, when what do you think is going to help you to get it together? If you stand on the principles, and in no way am I talking about people who are being immature doing the best they can in their struggle. And that's, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that when you've thrown in uh, the towel and at that moment in your life, you just are not living for the Lord. You're trying, and then you run upon a brother or sister, somebody come and trying to get you established in the fellowship and you tell me, yeah, yeah, you know, but, oh, I'm coming back, but I got to get some stuff together. Okay, stuff together. Watch what happens. Because the longer you are away from your own values and principles and the longer you're away without actually developing them, they don't mature. You may have them, they may, they may be better elementary. And they're going to stay that way without the process of development without being in a fellowship, without being challenged, without the growth and the maturation. So everything that we have and everything that we do requires a preparation because we don't know what's coming down the road. Who knew 2020 was coming? Who was it that said they were so glad 2019 was over with? And in their desperation, silly people posted, man, bye-bye 2020. They're just glad they get it over with. Well, uh, some of them have probably faced some stuff in 2021 already. 
but they start posting, oh, Lord, here come a repeat. Well, stop worshiping the future and things you don't have. Let each time that you are you're being, being challenged, go ahead and do what you need to do today. Be who you need to be today. I mean, I mean this ain't a story about Daniel. This is a story about God. And, 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 if, and somehow we've raised these guys up from thousands of years ago as though they're only heroes that they are. You are today's heroes. You are the ones that people are looking forward to. You're the only ones that they can look for. We can teach them Daniel, but Daniel can't speak for himself other than in the text. But when people want a living model of a human being they can put their hand on, somebody that is faithful, that who realizes how much they need, a faithful God who will be faithful when our flesh fails us, and our flesh will fail us, but God won't. He just will not do that. So the issue here continues to be God is, God is the one that's faithful. They were faithful, but God was faithful before they were. How about with you? You know, I, I shared with you, you know this stuff, I reference when I say I share it, it wasn't nothing new. You live by faith every day. Now, how many of you plan to, to to have something bad happen to you this evening? When you got up this morning, you say, well, at 7 o'clock, something bad is going to happen to me, and I'm going to be in the hospital. How many of you made preparations for that? So you had to live by faith that, number one, you'd be alive, and then you have to have faith that nothing would happen to you. That's what faith is. Life is a mystery and it's uncertain, and there is nobody who can talk about certainty. There's no such thing as certainty. God is certain. Beyond that, it's all about faith. Is this helpful to you? Yes. We want people that we love to be, be certain. They're not. Neither, neither are you. There, there are no certain people. Everybody's irrational. Everybody's up and down. Everybody's moody. Everybody's confused. And everything that you want out of another person, you should stop wanting it because you can't give it. So you need to have God. Let's, let's do a straight talk here. You don't know who the man and the woman in your marriage is. Um, from the time you got up this morning, you have thought some things that you wish you had never thought and you're sick of, you can't do anything about it. Right? Right. Can the brother get an amen? Let the church say amen. So the reality of who we are and what we are is that we need to grow in faith in the Christ, faith in the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and faith in the God who created us. And we'd have fellowship and be encouraged with one another. That's just how it is. You just have to have somebody to encourage you. Else you'd, you'd be all alone, and all the thing you do is your own fault. And that's miserable. That's miserable. How many of you realize, this little side note, that you cannot stop those negative thinking? How many of you know that? So you spend the rest of your life thinking you can stop your negative thinking. You cannot. You never will. Because your thinking comes out of your brain. And you don't know how to function your brain. What do you think your brain is doing? So when you think about you got a mind, where is it? What is it functioning out of? So how many of you can control your brain? Can you control your kidneys and your liver and your heart? All of those organs that God made and they impact who you are and what you do. And you can't pick up a Bible and then change your thinking, but you can give energy to the things that God has taught us. That's why we try to teach you. Because your salvation and your life and your joy is focusing on those things and ignoring that other craziness that's going to run through your head all day long. Let it run. Don't, don't get frustrated talking about, I can't help it. I, I don't want to think that that's where it gets its life from. That every time you talk about, I ain't going to do it, 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 I ain't going to do it. Well, you're going to do it because you just gave it the life it needed. That's, that's how life works. That's how you work. So you decide the things you're going to do. And you, you decide the things that God will have you to do, to be who he wants you to be, and you focus on that. 
not paying attention to that other crap. It ain't real until you make it real. You have no control over what's in your brain, but you have control over what you put in it and how you act on it. And that's why even all these Bible studies, when I sent them to you in advance, you'd be in a totally different place now if you've ever studied them. Totally different place. But you get sabotaged by thoughts that are not real. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Because see, what is happening yeah. while I'm talking? Yeah. Your brain and your mind is trying to block everything I say. It's trying to lead you the same person that clicked on Zoom. They want you to be the same person when you clicked out. Because the brain feels good and safe with the information that it's already let in. So it doesn't want to hear anything else. It's good. I'm going to use this, this last illustration. If you were at church today and I ask you to give the names of the streets that you take to get back home, that's a couple of you who could tell us because you just turn left, go back down Martin Luther King Street, and then turn left and your house on the left. But everybody else can't tell you what streets because we go up and down the highway. We don't know what streets we, and, and, and then I would ask you, well, what the, how many houses on that street? What color are they? Who, because the brain knows how to get you home. You've done it so many times, over and over and over. But it cannot tell you what you haven't thought about, which is these three houses here. There's a green one here. This, this, this couple lives here. This, this. This is the street. This is the street. This is the street. If we had the church a similar day, I would stand up in this house and give $1,000 to the average person who could give their street address and how to get home based on the street. I wouldn't do it at Tanya because I know where she's still right there. She just turned left, turned left. But everybody else, you cannot tell people how to get home to your street. Because your brain will take you there. So if you live automatic on the faith that you have now, or you can increase it. And then you'll have values that you stand on no matter what. When you get challenged, you'll never be the same. Now here, somebody say something before I wrap it up. My time's about up. I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but I'm not. Y'all all right? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who's, controlling, who's controlling your brain? Uh. We can't. Your brain is in your head. Who's controlling it? The mind. Where's the mind? In the brain. So you right back where you started. <laughs> who's controlling the brain? <laughs> do you know do you know when, when the brain surgeons do surgery and they open a person's brain they don't see the mind they don't see thoughts at all so where are they only god knows no that ain't no trick question it's the truth when brain <laughs> surgeons do surgery, they open it up and they cannot find your thoughts so where are they So the point I'm still making is if you don't if you don't consistently ignore negative things that don't work for you, and if you don't build on the things God is saying because he wants you to grow and he said truth will set you free, if you're not searching for truth and you're satisfied where you are, then your faith is all the faith you're going to have. Now, you're going to be saved, but you won't get your rewards on the earth, and you won't get the rewards in heaven that you could have gotten. Yeah, you can make twenty thousand dollars a year now, and 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 live off over of the next thirty years. But what would happen if you made sixty thousand dollars? Because you use your brain to get creative and make more money and do other things. And that's how it is. So that faith that God has given us, the brain that He gave us, man, that thing is no computer yet can match the brain you got. 
Okay, Brother Dublin, and they've had enough. Okay. Daniel, Meshach, Reshach, and Abednego are not superhuman and nothing special about them except they were prepared. And they lived in their preparation that led them to have a deepening faith in Christ, and you can do the exact same thing. They got nothing on you. You don't have to worry about uh, Nebuchadnezzar coming taking you to Babylon. Then you would have those powers. No, God is God, and he has given you that today. You just got to want it. Do you realize how few people want to use their brain? He don't make you mad anymore like they used to, because you've already dropped stuff that was negative in your brain. You don't have no use for it. And you go on about your business, because you have now transformed by your mind. You got faith in God. There ain't no time for that silliness. Living out of fantasies from 7,000 years ago and living out of memories and stuff. Live in the reality of who you are today and what's in front of you today. And you're talking about counts and blessings. You got some powerful, powerful blessings every single day of your life. Read something, study something, dance, eat, forgive, go ahead and live. Quit going through this monotonous dead trot. Just dead walk, just slow going through life. My goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, Brother David. And I ain't clowning. I'm feeling good. I'm telling you, there's no clowning in me right now. I want to. I want to have some fellowship. I wish I had some singing people here. So we can get on up and do something right now. But I'm feeling the glory and the power of the Most High God. I love you all of this. I just do. And I want you to live, live, live. I want you to look at those trees and see poems. I want you to use your creativity. And I really want everything that I can say. Yeah, sing your song. Sing and be happy today. If the skies above you are great, however you sing it, sing your own version. You got to sing, you'll be happy today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a good time. Come on, I was there with you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to wait on me. You use you, your own version. Sing and be happy. <laughs> God bless you, beloved. Devin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Got a prayer in you? Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and pray. Let us pray. God, we thank you for uh, allowing us to be able to assemble tonight, Father, and be able to study your word together as one. God, we also just thank you for your blessing and your covering and protecting us, God. We, we take a lot for granted and uh, we don't stop enough to just think about and appreciate you for you know, in all of your fullness, God. We pray that we'll be more conscious of that in the future. I uh, realize that there are things that are just beyond our control and be okay with that. So God, we just ask that you just continue to bless us, uh, continue to uh, just allow us to be able to grow with our, our patience, our discipline, our understanding. And God, we just thank you for uh, you're covering. God, we ask that you be with us as there's an anticipated storm coming through the area, that you'll just protect everyone, keep us safe, allow our homes to be as they were when we left the home, with our house. And God, we just ask that you just watch over us, protect us. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Angels and lions. Angels and lions. Sunday. Ready?